Hello. Hello and welcome to this video on uh, Python 3 programming. We were going through exceptions and we had covered till overflow error. So we will resume at Python finalization error. This exception is derived from runtime error. It is read when an operation is blocked during interpreter shutdown, also known as Python finalization. Now, some of the operations which can be blocked with the Python finalization error during the Python finalization is creating a new Python thread or OS dot fork. And uh, we'll see this sys dot is finalization error. The other problem is recursion error. This exception is derived from runtime error. It is read when the interpreter detects that the maximum recursion depth sys dot get recursion limit is exceeded. I will show you how to raise this error. So first we invoke the Python interpreter and we say sys dot uh, we will have to import sys import sys sys dot get recursion limit thousand is the limit okay so we go here this was our exceptions dot pi we say def f and we pass it a number uh, say x and uh, if x uh, less than say 10,000 then we call f of x plus 1 okay and we call this with the uh, f of 1 so this will definitely cause a recursion error because uh, it will call f 10,000 times. So if you see this uh, exception, so what is the file? Exception.py. So it clearly says that maximum recursion depth exceeded. This is a recursion error. So it can come, and there is no way you can uh, do tail recursion in Python because it does not optimize. Reference that is this exception is read when a weak reference proxy created by weak reference proxy function is used to access an attribute of the referent after it has been garbage collected. For more information on weak reference, see the weak ref module. We will see this once we reach weak ref. Runtime error. Read when an error is detected that does not fall in any of the other categories. The associated value is a string indicating what previously went wrong. So we can uh, generate this error with uh, say def f, we pass it x and we say print x plus 100 and then we call this f with a string uh, hello. This should uh, generate our runtime error. No, it does the check. Okay. Um, this won't be a runtime error. So, a runtime error, a better way to produce a runtime error is um, say, we, what you do is we take input, x is equal to input. And then we call f of x. Okay. We give it. Now this is also type error. So this won't be runtime error. Runtime error are usually ha they happen when, say, you pull something from database. In this case, if you pull x from database, then this will probably that might come runtime error or it might be type error again anyway we will see runtime error once we start writing projects it will come so sometimes it may come sometimes it not but we will see stop iteration read by next and it creates underscore underscore next underscore underscore method to signal that there are no further items produced by the iterator Value is the exception object has a single attribute value which is given as an argument when constructing the exception and defaults to none. When a generator or poroutine function returns, a new stop iteration instance is read 
and the value returned by the function is viewed as the value passed to the constructor of the exception. If a generator code directly or indirectly raises its stop expression, it is converted into a runtime error. So this is one way to generate runtime error. Retaining the stop iteration as the new exception stage. Stop async iteration must be read by the underscore underscore a next underscore underscore method of an asynchronous iterator object to stop an iteration. Then we have syntax error, which we will uh, encounter a lot of time when we try to execute the code. It's a syntax error encountered by parser in the code. This may occur in an import statement in a call to the built-in functions or when reading the initial script or standard input, also interactive. The str of the exception instance returns only the error message despite details is a tuple whose members are also available as separate attributes. So these tuples are file name, line number, offset, text, in line number, end offset. For example, if you see here, you have the file name, you have the line number in module, you have function name. So these informations are part of this exception. Then we have indentation error. So base class for syntax error is related to incorrect indentation. This is subclass of syntax error. So for example, uh, one way to produce that is by mixing uh, tabs and spaces. Or for example, uh, Sure, this will produce only spaces because it is configured to do so. Yeah, but you will see it typically does not happen with modern editors, they are very smart. Tab error is read when indentation contains an inconsistent use of tabs and spaces. This is a subclass of indentation error. So, for example, here if you say print x and you give it more indentation. You see, it immediately tells you unexpected indentation. So if you try to run this, then you get indentation error here. So that is one way to produce indentation error. Tabs error will come when you mix this with tabs and spaces. So for example, uh, my tab produce spaces. But if your editor is misconfigured or a simple text editor where you have spaces here, and tab here, then it will give you a tab error. System error. Raid when the interpreter finds an internal error, but the situation does not look so serious to cause it to ab abandon all hope. The associated value is a string indicating what went wrong in low level terms. You should report this to the author or maintainer of your Python interpreter. Be sure to report the version of the Python interpreter. It is also printed at the start of interactive Python session. The exact error message. The exception associated value and if possible the source of the program that triggered the error. Exception system exit. This exception is read by sys.exit function. It enables from base exception instead of exception so that it is not accidentally caught by code that catches exception. This allows the exception to properly propagate up and call the interpreter to exit. When it is not handled, the Python interpreter exits, no stack case back is printed. The constructor accepts the same optional argument passed to sys.exit. If, sys if the value is an integer, it is specified the system exit status passed to sys.exit function. If it is none, the exit status is zero. If it has another type such as resting, the object's value is printed and the exit status is one. A call to sys.exit is translated into an exception so that cleanup handlers finally clauses of try statements can be executed and so that a debugger can execute a script without running the risk of losing control. The os.exit function can be used if it is absolutely positively necessary to exit immediately, for example in the child process after a call to os.4. The code is the exit status of certain message that is passed to the constructor. In general, you should not call sys.exit. It's a very bad idea. So, you will probably never encounter this in a well-written code. Type error, type error we already seen. Read, an, read when an operation or function is applied to an object of inappropriate type. For example, adding string to integers. The associated value is a string giving details about the type mismatch. 
this exception may be read by the user code to indicate that an attempted operation on an object is not uh, supported and is not meant to be if an object is meant to support a given operation but has not yet provided an implementation not implemented error is the proper exception to raise passing arguments to the wrong type example passing a list when an int is expected should result in a type error but passing arguments with the wrong value example a number outside expected boundaries should result in a value error then we have unbound local error it is read when a reference is made to a local variable in a function or method but no value has been bound to that variable this is a subclass of name error so for example what can happen is you can say why uh, why is it unbound local so no value has been bound we just can we can say local y um, no that won't be a proper example i will think about an example and uh, uh, get this done i have never encountered this error because it is hard to create an unbound local but i'll see i'll try to create one such example unicode error read when a unicode related encoding or decoding error occurs it is a subclass of value error so unicode error has attributes that describe the encoding or decoding error for example a dot object a dot start column a dot in gives the particular val invalid input that codec failed on so it will give you encoding reason object of the codec that was attempting to encode or decode start and end of the invalid data in the object so there are exceptions like unicode encode error which will come while encoding it is a subclass of unicode error similarly we have decode error which will come during decoding translate error it will come during translating value error read when an operation or function receives an argument that has the right type but an inappropriate value and the situation is not described by a more precise exception such as index error zero division error will come when we try to divide by zero so this is very simple to produce um you can say print one by zero and it will give the division of zero division error is there now following exceptions are kept for compatibility with previous version starting from python 3.3 they are aliases of os error environment error io error and windows error uh, windows error is only on windows these are aliases of os error now we will look at OS exceptions. One is blocking IO error. Now blocking IO error uh, is read when an operation would block an object set for non-blocking operation. For example, what you can do is uh, if you say def uh, async, uh, you can say async def f, and in this function you say with open uh say some file name test.txt comma r as f and in this you call it say data is equal to f dot read so in general this is a blocking call while this function is a synchronous function so if we if there is an error if an exception comes while reading the file it will cause uh, when an operation blocks an object okay so set for non-blocking operation so what you can do is um, i will create an error for this kind uh, later on once we have uh, dealt with the sync functions right now i don't think i have explained the sync functions in great detail so once I've explained the sync functions, I will explain this, how we can get this, these errors. Now these errors can be E again, E, e already, E would block E in progress. So you can look up these uh, error numbers uh, by the technique I have shown in my previous video. Now in addition of those, it can have one more attribute that is written an integer containing the number of characters written, written to the string 
before it block. This attribute is available when using buffered IO classes from the IO module. Child process error. Read when an X operation on child process field corresponds to error error now e child. Connection error. So connection error is has many subclasses, broken pipe error, connection aborted error, connection refute error, and connection reset error. For example, uh, you want to fetch uh, uh, from a website, a page from a website, and by mistake, suppose you specified port manually, and the port is such that the website is not listening on, then it will be connection refute error. Connection reset error can come because of SSL errors. So we, these are uh, errors which you will see when you are mostly doing network I.O. Broken pipe error is a subclass of connection error. Read when trying to write on a pipe while the other end has been closed or trying to write on a socket which has been shut down or writing corresponding to error no E pipe or E shutdown. Connection aborted, refute and reset we have seen. I uh, have said file exists error. Read when trying to create a file or directory which exists corresponds to error no E exists. File not found error. So, read when a file or directory is requested but does not exist corresponds to error no E no end. So, for example, uh, we can say test.txt probably exists. So, we will see this and we will have to comment this out. So, this will raise that error no. This is the file not found error, error no 2. So, this is the error which we generated. Interrupted error. Read when a system call is interrupted by an incoming signal corresponds to erno e interrupt. Uh, this would be very difficult to produce because uh, to interrupt a system call, we need some time to interrupt it. We will have to make a system call which runs for a long, long time so that we can interrupt it. So it will be very difficult to produce, but again, uh, we'll see. Next exception is, is a directory error read when a file operation such as OS remove is requested on a directory corresponds to error no E is DIR. Not a directory error read when, an op, when a directory operation such as OS.list DIR is requested on something which is not a directory. On most POSIX platforms, it may also be read if an operation attempts to open or traverse a non directory file as if it were a directory corresponds to error no E not DIR. Permission error I have shown earlier. Read when trying to run an operation without the adequate access right. For example, file system permissions corresponds to erno e access e perm e not capable. Process lookup error read when a given process does not exist corresponds to erno e search. Timeout error read when a fun system function timed out at a system level corresponds to erno e timed out. Uh, I will have to see how to produce this. I don't know uh, of this because I don't remember any system function which timed out, which times out, which take a time up. I, I will have to study to raise this. Error. Next, we have warnings. The following exceptions are used in warning categories. One is warning, which is the base class of warning. User warning is the base class for warnings generated by user code. We have deprecation warning, which is the base class for warnings about deprecated features. Then those warnings are intended for other Python developers. Ignored by the default warning filters except in main module, enabling the Python development mode shows this warning. So you can read PEP 387 to go uh, to know more details about it. We have pending deprecation warning, base class for warnings about features which are obsolete or expected to be deprecated in the future but are not deprecated at the moment. This class is rarely used as emitting a warning about a possible upcoming deprecation is unusual and deprecation warning is preferred for already active deprecation. Ignored by the default warning filters, enabling the Python development mode shows this warning. Then we have syntax warning, a runtime warning. So these are base classes for their corresponding behavior. Future warning. So this is about uh, deprecated values. Import warning. This is related to mistakes in module imports. So we have Unicode warning, encoding warning, bytes warning, and resource warning. 
so these are the warnings uh, which are there then we have uh, uh, let's see how much is the exception drops okay so the following are used when it is necessary to raise multiple unrelated exceptions they are part of the exception hierarchy so that so they can be handled with except like all other exceptions in addition they are recognized by except star which matches the subgroups based on the type of contained exceptions so you can construct uh, exception group here and we have base exception group here both of these types wrap the exceptions in the sequence excs the message parameter must be a string the difference between the two classes is that base exception group extends base exception and it can wrap any exception while exception group extends exception and it can only wrap subclasses of exception. This design is so that except exception catches an exception group but not base exception group. So you should be careful that, uh, not careful, it won't allow you. Uh, a base exception should not be put inside the uh, exception group. For example, uh, the one which we studied here on base exception yeah so sys.exit for example this exception system.exit is not put inside an exception group because it derives from base exception the base exception group constructor returns an exception group rather than a base exception group if all contained exceptions are exception instances so that it can be used to make the selection automatic the exception group constructor on the other hand raises the type error if any contained exception is not an exception subclass message is the message argument to the constructor this is the read only attribute exception is a tuple of exceptions in the excs sequence given to the constructor this is the read only attribute subgroup returns an exception group that contains only the exceptions from the current group that match the condition, so you specify the condition or none if the result is empty. The condition can be an exception type or a couple of exception types in which case each exception is checked for a match using the same check that is used in an exception clause. The condition can also be a callable that accepts an exception as its single argument and it is true for the exceptions that should be in the subgroup. So while it may be tempting to club exceptions into an exception group it is it violates the kiss principle it makes use of something which is uh, rather esoteric so usually you will have two or three exceptions in general at max or maybe four so uh, you might want to combine them into exception group but in general it is not recommended rather you should uh, use uh, individual exceptions so that it is clear in the code that which exceptions can be handled and which cannot be handled and what error message you can give. Similarly, we have split uh, like subgroup but returns the pair match rest where match is subgroup condition and rest is the remaining non-matching part. Derive is returns an exception group with the same message but which wraps the exceptions in EXCS. This method is used by subgroup and split, which are used to various contexts to break up an exception group. A subclass need to overwrite in order to make subgroup and split return instances of a subclass rather than exception group. Subgroup and split copy the traceback cause context notes fields from the original exception group to the one returned by derive. So these fields do not need to be updated by derive. So for example, what we have here is uh, we have a uh, my group it derives from exception group and its function derive takes an argument excs and returns the group with message and excs so we construct my group with the name eg value error and type error are given here and then we add a note a note and then in the context we have the exception context and cause is also here now, if you raise this exception E and you catch, and then you try to split based on value error, this is the output you will have. Note that base exception group defines new so subclasses that need a different constructor signature need to override that rather than in it. 
For example, the following defines an exception group subclass which accepts an exit code and construct the group's message from it. So, for example, this errors is, take, is derived from exception group and it calls supers new, that is exception group, it takes the errors and it supplies an exit code. Exit code is supplied to the new and then it also passes on the errors and it sets the exit code to the supplied exit code. And then the derive function constructs this errors with this exit code and the exceptions in, in the constructor. So now we see the exception hierarchy. So you can take a look at this exception hierarchy for yourself. But if you have followed the two videos, then uh, it is not necessary. So you can skip this part, but in general, you can uh, refer this for quick lookup. After this, we come to text processing services, which uh, I will start in the next video. So first we have strings and then we have regular expressions. Note that once we start regular expressions, we will spend quite a lot of time on regular expressions. So let's quickly see string. So string should not take us more than two, three videos because a lot of this has been already covered. For example, the format specification many language I have already covered when we are doing the basic stuff. I'll show you when we covered format specification. So if you go to standard library and go to built-in functions, we had discussed format. And when we discussed format, we had covered the format specification many language. So we will entirely skip this. And format string syntax we will entirely skip this one also. So string should not take us more than two videos. Uh, format examples also I believe I have covered. So we will start with template strings and uh, plus the other constants which we have seen. So after probably two videos or three videos, we will start with regular expression and that should be something practical and interesting. So stay tuned uh, and I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Happy programming.